if there's one thing that we haven't had since I don't know, like the 50s, maybe is a captive audience, right? It just you those days of having your market in a certain place at a certain time, that's just gone. And so I think this is such an interesting time because for people who are recognizing this moment and are saying, wow, this is my audience is right there, right? Like they're they're watching these videos, they're engaging, they're they're commenting. So I think there's that. And I think then there's a real hunger for understanding how to make the most of, of most of what's going on. Now, today's guest um, is actually one of the most fascinating people that I've had the opportunity to get to know over the last, uh, God knows uh, how long here, it's been a while. Um, she's actually the CEO and founder of one of the, um, let's just say uh, a, uh, well, let's put it this way. Um, she's the only new media company to be honored by both the White House and the United Nations as a top 100 company in the United States. Um, her name is Shama Haider. Shama is, well, let me see here. I'm going to pull up her bio. She's got so many things that, you know, I want to make sure I hit it all. She's uh, the top voice in marketing uh, by LinkedIn for four years in a row. She's a two-time best-selling author of The Zen of Social Media, uh, an internationally acclaimed keynote speaker, winner of the Tech Titan Emerging CEO Award, one of the top 30 under 30 entrepreneurs, and I can go on and on and on. She was actually called the Millennial Master of the Universe. Uh, one of the more fascinating things about Shama, and the reason why I wanted to bring her on, is that she has a unique concept of finding moments, moments in companies that allow them to increase their demand gen uh, by significant number. Uh, in fact, 80% of all our campaigns go viral. Uh, I have seen this work behind the scenes, um, even in today's market and today's very volatile economy, she has taken companies that were seamlessly underdogs that one would think had no hope of, of generating uh, much demand and turn that into one of the most extraordinary opportunities uh, in their business to date. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Shama Haider. Hi, everybody. Hi, Charlie, can I, have you, can I have you do my intro every time I go live or speak? <laughs> That'd be pretty nifty. I got to tell you, though, in the beginning, I'm not used to getting on camera in a live situation. I had a little bit of a, uh, you know, camera moment of going, oh, my God, the camera's on me. I'm getting all tongue tied and whatnot. I'm not used to be. I'm used to being recorded, not live, you know. But I was just about to say, I was like, your videos are some of the best that I've ever seen. I like I never miss any of your coaching videos. I love them all. So I was like, what are you talking about? But yeah, life feels a little different. I, I can see that. I can understand that. Well, this is not new to you because you're typically on stage when when you can do conferences, what, two, three, four times a month as a keynote speaker, somewhere around there? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because the keynote side and then there's the whole media side, right? So I do a ton of stuff for like Fox Business. And I will tell you that the most harrowing thing, this actually doesn't feel so foreign because I can see you and... But when you do, and this is, people don't realize this, but when you do a satellite interview with a, uh, a national publication and we coach our clients when they're doing this, is you go into this room and there's no one else in that room usually with you. So the sound engineers and stuff are on the other side. You can't usually see them or you might be able to see them through the glass. And there's like literally an X on, you know, taped, like literally duct tape <laughs> on the wall. And they say, look at that. And so, and they put this little earpiece inside. So you're like, it's like having a little voice in your head and then, you know, but the audience sees you. And so you're looking at this X because otherwise it looks weird. Um, you know, if, they, if they're not looking at you. Oh my <laughs> that, gosh. That's, that's good practice because I, let me tell you, it's probably the most, when you start, it's the most unnatural feeling in the world. Because, you know, even if you hear something in your ear, your instinct isn't to look straight ahead and answer that question. It's to be able to, um, I don't know, like talk to somebody, right? To be able to 
connect. So I don't know, I, I just a lot of training, I guess, on that side, and it'll prepare you for for any kind of live. I, I would have to imagine. I, you know, I want to do more of these Facebook lives, and actually, this was inspired by a conversation that you and I had about the importance of just being out there. The content yeah. that you're put that you put out. I mean, you're very voracious. You're putting out content on LinkedIn, hence why you're one of the top influencers. Uh, you put out you put out content on your Facebook profiles regularly, on Twitter regularly. Um, so before we get into sort of those moments, why is what we're doing right now so important? Um, this specific live video, this is yeah. what- <laughs> Well, just in, ge in general, why? I mean, you're so voracious in, in putting out content and, yeah. and you, you know, you, really kind of talked me into doing more of these Facebook lives. Like why is what we're doing right now so important, particularly in today's market? Yeah, so a couple of reasons, right? And this is, I think, what so many companies and, and people aren't understanding. One, you have a captive audience. Now we can talk about why we why we are a captive audience right now, but the truth is this pandemic and this working from home and social distancing, you know, it's forced us even more to be digital than ever before. And if there's one thing that we haven't had since, I don't know, like the 50s, maybe, is a captive audience, right? It just, you, those days of having your market in a certain place at a certain time, that's just gone. And so I think this is such an interesting time because for people who are recognizing this moment and are saying, wow, this is, my audience is right there, right? Like they're, they're watching these videos, they're engaging, they're, they're commenting. So I think there's that. And I think then there's, a real hunger for understanding how to make the most of, of most of what's going on. So I think there's a moment here from so many different perspectives. And when all these different things collide, that's where you, I, I call this like strategic serendipity. Yeah. So there's this greater strategy uh, and I follow it. And I know Charlie, you follow it. And it's this idea of, you know, doing things purposefully, right? Like what's, when I put a piece of content out there, what's the bigger goal? And then there's that serendipity aspect where you don't know that one thing that will that will trigger someone to say, aha, like have that aha moment or that light bulb moment to want to work with you, to want to learn more, to want to engage. And so I think this is just such a great time in history to be able to do that. Um, I think the brands that are really succeeding are the ones that are saying, okay, how do I, even if you're not like busy, right, in the usual sense, let's say your business isn't in the in the usual which really business is not the usual for any of us but yeah. let's see it's not the specific you know speed or whatnot great time to address all those back burner things i can't tell you how many clients we're working with right now they're like oh that project we've always wanted to do let's do it now like right. this is the time because you know it's kind of like these the things behind the scenes and when the curtain drops because it it will right the curtain yeah. curtain will drop and then it's show time and it's the brands that have prepared, the ones that have put in the work. Um, and you know what? I, I love what you've taught me about. You know, only three percent of your market is ready to buy at any given moment, right? That's right. <laughs> that's sure. something we talk a lot about. And so we think it's about that, about keeping consistent in the content that you're putting out there, the messaging that you have, and know that all these things are building on each other. Now. You know, this is the Beyond Seven Figures podcast in a live episode format. And you've done, you talk a lot about moments. Now talk to me about how a moment plays a part in taking a company beyond seven figures. So, you know, moments are really interesting things because let's let's step away even from the business side of things, right? We can, I'll connect the dots for you, but let's just talk for people out there. If I asked you about your life, I bet you would answer in moments, right? It would be sure. maybe the moment you met Heather. Sure. It would be the moment you had, you know, your you held your kid for the first time. The like our lives are made up of these moments. And these moments are have just such they have just so much more um we have such more emotional capital attached to them, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't tell me about this random Sunday that you had. That's not usually how you describe life. But if you chain all these moments together, all of a sudden you have, you know, a, 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 a picture, you have a sense of someone's life. Now, businesses, it's very similar too, because even when you're successful, especially when you're successful, what happens is regular sort of marketing and PR will, you'll start to see diminished returns. This is just sort of par for the course. At any point, 
this is true for working out, as I'm learning now. <laughs> right? With, with anything that you, you do, you plateau eventually. And so when you hit a plateau, I think this is where particularly moments are so crucial because you look at what's the moment that's happening. And then when you can leverage that, when you can fully take you know, advantage of that, all of a sudden you can catapult to the next level. And it breaks that, you know, it's really great for breaking that plateau and getting to that next level. And I'll give you an example. And, you know, moments don't even have to be like major earth shattering things. But one of right. the examples right now is, you know, the, the Navy is one of our clients, the Nexcom. And for those who are not familiar, uh, it's um, the Nexcom for the military is like a Costco or a retail store on military bases. Okay. Anybody who's military knows the Nexcom. They do an amazing job. They really care about their customers. So this whole month, we're actually doing, you know, customer appreciation where all these entertainers and celebs are going live and, and entertaining the customers. And it's really cool. And it's also the next comes in you know, 74th anniversary. Sure. So rather than just taking that moment and saying, it's your anniversary, this is happening, we have a sale, whatever. They're really thinking about how do we take this moment and, you know, while we have this captive audience. And so we've been able to come up with this really kind of cool concept that we're executing with them and, and other partners, which is customer appreciation. So you've extended sort of what might be an internal memo, what might be like a Facebook post, right? Might be, yeah. just the, hey, it's an anniversary to really taking that, giving it legs, giving it, you know, uh, breathing life into it to turn it into a, a month long celebration of what the next comp stands for and being able to reach so many more um, customers with retention, but also acquisition. Right? You're getting on more people's radar, you're building that brand visibility. So that's just one example. It's the idea of finding something that you feel like is you know, special, or I'll give you another example. Let me actually, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. So let's talk about Nextcom for a minute, okay? So the traditional way of customer appreciation is to send a few emails out maybe you know, customer appreciation, throw a few balloons in the, in the front door and, you know, maybe yeah. give away some handouts, something like that. Uh, they might do a little PR, you know, and say, okay, we're going to do a customer appreciation. That's the way like most companies will sure. approach customer appreciation. But what you're suggesting is doing something different. So just so that I'm crystal clear and so our audience is crystal clear, what's so different about about creating the moment. So it's more than just a few balloons and we're gonna offer a discount for a day or send a few emails. What are you doing that's different? Yeah, so I would say a moment is, is described is, you know, if you look at, it has to have three things, right? It has to be meaningful. So it's gotta be relevant. It has to be unique. It has to be something different. So not sending out the emails or, you know, customers, we appreciate you. All right, like that gets drowned out in the white noise. And then three, it's gotta be connected to business outcomes. So, you know, a meaningful, unique, and differentiator. So when you look at that and you say, well, this could just be a regular old thing, right? That it might just, we might see a little blip perhaps in sales because yeah. we, we reached out to our customers. Instead, what this does is creates a, a very different sense of brand loyalty. It extends that um, what might be a one day, you know, occasion into something that's a full on campaign. See, now the press isn't writing or you're not approaching the media and saying, oh, guess what? It's our 74th anniversary. Great. What's yeah. right? Like, that's it. But you're really able to say, well, in honor of this anniversary, we are celebrating our customers who helped us get to 74 years of success, right? As as an institution in the military, as, as something that's really well respected and, and loved. It's a beloved it, people who have core you know, very emotionally connected to the brand. It's not something that is just a traditional retail um, outlet. And so this takes all of those components and it just creates so much energy around it that rather than now see like a blip in sales, you're seeing a much greater wave, right? You're seeing much more customer retention. You're seeing a much greater customer acquisition because it's, it's one thing to say, oh, cool, I feel appreciated. Let me use this coupon. It's another to say, oh my God, this band is performing. This is so cool. Let me share it with all my other friends. So and that's part of, I know 80% of all the campaigns that you create go viral, right? And so yeah. part of, I guess, going viral is you're, when you're doing something that's unexpected, 
people take note and they want to talk about it and share it because it's unexpected, right? What else goes into a campaign that um, is the difference between a campaign that falls flat versus a campaign that goes viral? Yeah, so it's really interesting, you know, and when I say viral too, and then as you say it, I think for some people they might think, oh, does that mean it gets, you know, a billion views? Some of our campaigns have, but what's much more important is virality is described by business outcomes. So for a campaign like Nextcoms to go viral per se, um, specifically, it just means that it has to appeal to their audience. It goes vi viral in their ecosystem, right? Because if yeah. you're not a shopper and you're not a potential shopper, great, you can support it, but you're outside our, our arena of influence. You're not our yeah. target market. And so virality, for the sake of virality, eh, right? Like I'm, that doesn't even get me excited. I'm like, okay, cool. But, but when you can connect, <laughs> but when you can connect the dots and you say, okay, this is how you drive business. I think that's really key, right? Um, and the way you do that is obviously build awareness. You create just massive buzz around something, but it's relevant too. It's not buzz for the sake of buzz. It makes sense. Think about how timely this is, because you look at um, you you look at very specifically. You know, everybody being home, we are a captive audience. You can't necessarily do, and you know, you also have all these artists. So that's the other piece of it. Right? You've got all these artists who want to perform. They're artists. They love performing. They love connecting. They don't have an outlet necessarily. I mean, they could go through their social channels, but it's not like, you know, performing on stage. It's a little bit different. So you take that element and you say, wow, this is great. We can pull from this piece. We can pull from, you know, giving these artists a platform. They want to support the military. They, they want to support their country. They're patriotic. That's awesome. Yeah. Bring all those pieces together. So I think the difference, too, when you look at moment based momentum, the work that we do is we, we pull from different areas where it makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's so funny because, you know, it's it really is a, a um, it does have a time clock on it. And I, I talked to another company. Moments have a time clock. Yeah, it is. They absolutely have a time clock. I talked to another company about a month or two months ago. And they do, they're uh, SaaS, they do financial services, and they have a lot of data, right? They have a lot of data on yeah. how Americans shop and consume and whatnot. And a month ago, I said, listen, I think this is amazing. I think this, and I don't say this lightly, and I don't say this often, but I said, this could be like a New York Times cover story because you have data that we, if we track it, we can say, how is this pandemic changing habits for customers? Yeah. Like how are people, you know, how are the American people, how are their buying habits different now, yeah. two, three weeks into working from home social distancing versus before? And... You know, it's it. W I was so disappointed because this was one of those things where it was like the my point of contact. They were excited. They were like, "Oh, I can't get buy-in for my team or whatnot." And we had lots of other projects. So honestly, Charlie, I know you won't love me for this, but I was like, "Okay, whatever. I'm that's fine." <laughs> like, I got more stuff to do. Yeah, I'm not gonna see. And I, the the team always jokes that you know I don't like to preach. I'll just baptize those who are ready. I think yeah. that's the other thing about like if you're ready, I'll you know. So it's very much that three percent. Like if you're ready. Yeah make it happen so it's really funny because after that conversation it was like okay we you know the team's just not ready i'm like okay fine that's oh. and it's so funny because just two days ago new york times did a cover story on exactly that topic they yeah. talked about how americans were changing their buying habits and they quoted a lot of uh, you know they, they pulled from a lot of their competitors they pulled we like that was it was and yeah. it just you know, it frustrates me because I was like, that was their moment. <laughs> they could have, you know, and what's that worth? What's a covered story in the New York Times like that worth? Or oh, something? Right. So it's, uh, yeah, but so it, it does have a time clock. Like you can't, a moment is, you know, the, you have to act. You have to act fast. You have to be decisive and take action. But if you do it, you do it right. Um, you you definitely see the benefit. I mean, I have so many examples of, of clients who have trusted us and said, let's do it. And it's paid off, you know. So, so let's talk about something for a second. So, I, you know, as you know, I work with a lot of companies that are doing seven and eight figures a year. And, you know, they may be comparing themselves to the Navy saying, all right, well, I'm not sure that we're the Navy. Um, but, you know, is there a moment in my company? If, you know, we're doing seven, eight figures a year, what kind of moments can we create? 
And so when you're looking at a seven or eight figure company, and I know that you work with several as well, mm -hmm. what are the type of moments? And there are two types, right? There's ones that are basically gifted to you, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like uh, now. Like now. Uh, and then there are moments that you can manufacture and you can create. So can you go over a, like a bunch of different examples of the different moments and maybe how you applied it today when, you know, things are, are more volatile and tough for many. And yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, questions. No, I, I love this. It's just, it's so much fun. I mean, I could talk about this all day and I, you know, to me, this is a really fun thing. And it, regardless of this is the thing, it didn't have to, it doesn't have to, yes, we work with the Nextcom, we work with Chase, we work with a lot of these brands, but we also work with a lot of these, you know, middle market companies, smaller businesses even, because much more important than the size of your company is the size of your vision and like your ability to say yes to things, to um, to play the game, right? And I think that's, that's so much more an attitude. Like we worked with huge enterprise companies where the team was so smart and they had such a hard time getting buy-in from their their top brass because they just they didn't get it for whatever reason and that's really hard and then the cool thing about working with middle market and small businesses sometimes the seven to eight figure folks that you're talking about is you know the buck stops with them so as yeah. long as that leadership is excited and, and good to go the sky's the limit right there's right. you can actually move faster because there's not as much red tape you know when you work with the military or enterprise or anything often the time it takes to sometimes get to something you lost some of the time and flavor and you know yeah. versus when you work with a company where decisions can be made rapidly like yes no right we want to do this yeah. then it's different yeah let me give you a great example of a of a smaller uh firm that we worked with manufacturing right not like you wouldn't think it's the sexiest of industries and let's face right. it it's, it's not right it's not coca-cola it's uh so manufacturing company based out of kansas so not not a major yeah. code. Yeah. Um, and what was really interesting is when all this happened, the, the moment was to talk about supply chain. Mm -hmm. right? And because they're manufacturing and they actually, it's not even that they just have all their operations domestic, they actually even had international. But here's the cool thing is because we've worked with this company over the last uh, year or two, we'd already built those kind of relationships, right? That like we've got some of that, that going. And so when this hit, we were able to take that client and he, I mean, right now he's the de facto expert on supply chain for most of the major networks. It's because really you created that moment for him to be the Yeah, 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 of course, because, you know, we laid the groundwork. So got sites in place, like, you know, build thought leadership, right? Your bio, like, who is this guy you're pitching to the media? They don't know, you've got to give them, right. you've got to give structure. So we, the cool thing was we built that structure and then when we had, when we could manufacture this moment, so it's like, what's the, what's happening right now? So when, um, even three weeks ago, when all this happened, one of the things that's been, of course, massively affected is supply chain. Yep. And there's huge focus on, should we focus on international supply chain? Like, is domestic always the way to go? And to be able to take our client and say, here you go, <laughs> right? This is the moment where you step forward because not only is this your wheelhouse, you do manufacturing. So imagine, you know, when he gets on Fox Business and says, listen, this is what we're seeing with our customers. This is what we know to be true about manufacturing. This is what we know to be about supply chain. We've been doing this for 20 plus years. Like this is our expertise. Yeah. The phone rings. Right. Oh. Right. The phone rings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, you know, I've talked to several clients who have been remote their entire lives. Mm -hmm. You know, and well, one particular client, they have 100 employees that have been remote. This is that their moment. Been a tremendous opportunity, you know, to leverage a moment when people are wondering, how do we go remote? Well, hey, guess what? We've done this for a while. You know, we can leverage remote. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know and sometimes things, even when there's a, uh, I will say this, even when there's a macro moment, it's still on you to weave that in and, and create that micro moment. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of broader context. And the cool thing is people don't realize you can have moments simultaneously. So you could have this moment where you're talking about how, you know, remote businesses is, is, is the key to, to success or another client of ours. This was really interesting. Small business. They do uh, digital newsrooms 
for for huge corporations. So like they yeah. run, you know, Nissan's media room, like they yeah. run the online room. And of course, like the cool thing is they see trends that nobody else is privy to. Right. Yeah. Generally, it's it's like an interesting business. But like right now, to be able to say, guys, it's almost like you know, finding moments is like you have a spotlight and there's a big dark stage and you can put that light where you want it to go. Yeah. And to be able to say, look, what what role are, are newsrooms, media rooms playing right now in this ecosystem? How yeah. did they all of a sudden, you know, they used to be kind of like the stepchild of websites and now they're so important because it's the first step. It's And it's more than media right now. Every, every consumer, every customer looks at a media room. Like that's where people yeah. get their tweets and so forth. So there's just so many ways <laughs> that you can create moments but also leverage kind of what's happening in the ecosystem right now to take full advantage of it. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, one of the more fascinating things, what I love about a moment is that we live now in this market or this economy where there's just so much noise and mm -hmm. everybody is saying the same thing and tripping over each other and just trying to scream louder and scream louder and scream louder. Uh, but, you know, to your point when you mentioned that if you can take a unique angle on something that is... Um, a unique angle on, uh, you know, a, a popular or interesting or notable type of event, you end up almost putting mute on everybody else and all the attention is immediately focused on you. And the funny thing is, is when you own the moment, you're going to find competitors trying to piggyback on that moment, but yeah. then they end up looking like the copycats, you know? <laughs> We've had plenty of that, trust me. We've had plenty of that with clients where they're first and then they've got a lot of copycats. I mean, they've had I have clients and I won't name them, but I have clients with their competitors and they've sent me screenshots of copying the exact. Yeah. You know I mean, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. to a T. So. And so, you know, I, I don't know if you're comfortable talking about this example, but one of the ones that stands out to me, you know, when we're looking at uh, and an industry right now where the entire world is, you know, entire world is shut down with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, restaurants are being are being closed. Many of them going out of business. Um, you took actually a company that you work with in the restaurant industry, um, and you actually created a moment where they are thriving. You know. I don't, I, I dare say even better than they did in the good times, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll let you take it from there. They are doing just phenomenally well. And I'll tell you a couple of keys to their success. One is their leadership, right? So uh, the company is is one dying. They're in the restaurant tech space. So as you can imagine, when this happened, restaurants were so hard hit. And what was interesting is I got a call from the CEO and his name is Ram. He's a good, a dear friend, very smart guy. Uh, br brilliant even and just a great heart so he called and we have that kind of relationship and I you know I like having that kind of relationship with my clients where we're where we have and I know you do Charlie like where you feel like I love working with these people right it's it's yeah. fun and so I get this call and I'm thinking oh man like he's going to be freaking out right now right like <laughs> this is this is bad I mean you've got restaurants shuttering this is like and this is just this is right when everything happened. There just nobody yeah. knew what was going on. It was complete like chaos. And he calls and he and he calls me and I picked up and I was like, "Hey, how you doing?" I was like, "In crazy times, you know." Let's and so and he said, "You know, we have to double down." And I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> great. But, you know, I you always want to be sensitive in times like these. So I it's. I tell this to clients and sometimes people look at me like I'm crazy until they see the results. And then it's like, ah, that's what you're talking about. But for Rom to call me and say, we should double down. And I was like, okay. He's like, listen, we have this team. I don't want to, I don't want to lay people off. I, we have this industry we're so committed to. We've been, you know, working, I've been working in this industry for 20 plus years. I don't want to let these guys down. And this, you know, if we, if for some reason it all goes to, to um, hell, like a oh well, but at least we know we did everything possible and we, you know, we left no stone unturned. So what can we do, right? Like, because he's, and I, I love that. And he said, you know, do you think this is our moment? Because I do. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it is our moment. And so 
it was really cool within that one call and you know it's very energizing too again when you have a leader that comes from a place of not fear not from a yes. place of oh no like you know you could have had a very different approach and he said and so we talked and we said listen this but, well, hold on one second yeah. though so you say you know i think this is your moment now i want i want to dive into your head okay so when you say i think this is your moment walk me through like what are the internal questions that you're asking yourself in order to determine yes i think this is a moment and here's how we're going to create a moment from this yeah so to me when i say this is your moment i'm thinking the precedent is talking about restaurants yeah right everyone is talking about restaurants but so then where do you go from there now because they but they're talking about restaurants and the current narrative is scary yeah right it's it's scary it's fear it's everything's shutting down it's it's pulled back yes yeah. so the moment there is it's almost a little counterintuitive but it's like what would be the opposite approach yeah right um i was just reading this article about uh rockefeller and i'll share it with you charlie because i know you love this stuff about how when he was a young man i think at 1857 he just gotten his first job and saw the market crash and it lasted for years but yeah. you know one of the things people said about him and he learned in that crisis was that when people got scared he got braver the more chaotic yes. he got he got calmer and i think the moment for me is like i i, I look for that within that framework yes so in all this chaos i can see opportunity and i in some ways i will say just naturally it's a gift right i'm not gifted with a lot of things you know me well enough to know that right? <laughs> you're often you know borderline terrible if not just outright inappropriate so like i'm not great at a lot of things but one thing i will say is has been a talent from from a relatively young age is being able to kind of spot those opportunities and when you can spot that opportunity and you have that lens and you hone it over the years doing this for so many clients so you know i know what works i know what doesn't work you know you know this is very different than like a gimmick right this has yeah. to come from a place where it is it serves a natural need again it's meaningful it's unique and it's a business driver in this case which is which is interesting that you said one of the first things you look at is how can I do something opposite of what everybody else is saying because yeah. that initially is unique. It is. It is. You're right. Like it, it's it's that you know all this kind of smoke, okay? yeah. and to be able to see the exit sign through the smoke, yeah. and also knowing. I mean, the difference is I knew we had a moment here, but I also knew it was going to be a long game to some degree, right? Like yeah. we, we, you'd have to, and it's funny because it is counterintuitive. You don't think. Oh my God, my I'm losing customers. Let me invest more. Right. But it's the very thing that works. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we looked at the technology, and again, Ram is very committed to the restaurant industry. And I think that again, this comes to the leadership. I can't make this up, right? You've got to get like you have yeah. to have the steak. I can provide the sizzle. In that case, there's a lot of steak. There's heart, there's good ideas, the team is there. It, all those pieces are there. They have expertise. They know their industry really well. And so we were able to say, we have this technology. Let's pivot this and let's offer it. Let's offer any restaurant that wants to now offer curbside dining, right? To be able to order, pay completely yeah. contactless for free. We will give them that technology. Within, you know, I'd say 48 hours, 1,500 restaurants had called up. Wow. Yeah. That's phenomenal. It, it's massive. It's massive because again, what's going to happen is this crisis is going to lift. Restaurants are going to reopen. One Dine is very smart. We're now constantly looking at micro moments and how we pivot. And I'll give you an example yeah. of that in just a second. You look at this big picture and you say, okay, as we're working these restaurants, what percentage do you think have said, hey, this technology is really cool. Thanks so much for helping us out right now. Would love to keep working together once things get back to right right that's brilliant and, huge. and then a micro moment in all and of this how many how many of the press picked up on it and how many people on social media picked up on it and then said hey you need to take advantage of this if you're doing curbside check-in because it's millions. millions i mean i i, I tweeted myself and it had like i don't know last i checked 800 retweets and if i was to pay 
for that type of exposure? What would oh, the dollar? Pay. There's no, you can't even pay for that kind of exposure. Right, but guess, take a guess at the, what is the impact? It would be, I mean, the same number of views that a Super Bowl ad gets you, right? But it, with a lot more authenticity. So millions of dollars, right? Oh, yes, easily. But the, yeah. and, but the beautiful thing about an ad versus a moment is an ad historically is not trusted because I'm putting out an ad about myself. You're not going to trust what I say about me because you're expecting me to say yeah. I'm the cool, I'm the best, I'm everything else. But the moment you create a, but the moment you create a moment, mm -hmm. right? You're actually creating a situation where other people are now talking about you and I am more likely going to believe somebody else and therefore my conversion rate will be higher. I'm going to be pre-sold because I trust somebody else. Yes. So, you know, this is, it's, it's, it's really exciting because, you know, when we're talking to small business owners, mm -hmm. um, many of them would think, okay, moments are great for big companies. Yeah. But moments are equally as powerful, if not more powerful, more powerful. Even for small business owners. Yeah, they're more powerful because they give you an advantage over huge competitors, right? Like it provides yeah. leverage like no others. Huge companies sometimes don't like don't need that leverage as much or it does like it moves them maybe a little bit right for a small company that's starting over here you give them leverage they're over here and it's yeah. it's very different than seeing me the screen <laughs> like it's a very yeah. different concept um yeah and, it, and it's really funny so we're constantly you know and that's the thing once you have the moment you you create momentum around it right and it keeps growing and growing and that's the cool part about how it. do you create momentum around it you keep you keep it going and so one of the things i you mentioned just so smart and i'll share this only for your audience like this is not something that i, I generally share <laughs> across the board but one of the things that we've had a lot of success with is rather than running ads to and you know again we're very different than like a traditional pr firm or traditional marketing firm we just have our focus is very much these moments creating momentum and so part of that is looking at multiple tactics not just media relations or whatnot sure. but one of our tactics has been um, to amplify press wins using Facebook ads, right? So sure. rather than someone saying, oh, we're so cool, here's your ad, you've got Forbes saying you're so cool, here's you know what they do, and then amplifying that. So there's there's multiple ways to keep that going. The other part is, you know, when you have that moment, you're always looking for more sparks, if you will. And yep. I'll give you an example when on one of the press conferences, and God knows we have enough fodder these days, like every day there's, yeah. <laughs> I watch them because I'm like, I know there's moments in here. I just, yeah, it's um, and so, you know, Dr. Fauci gets on and this was a couple of, like, maybe a week ago. And he says, um, I was taking a walk down, um, you know, right, like right outside in, in DC. And he says, I was so proud to see a restaurant offering curbside. They've got a sign outside. They're telling people where to sign. It's where, where to stand, where to get their food. And I was like, that's us. Yeah. <laughs> that's us. That's what we've been doing. And so, and it was really cool, you know, to, and so then of course we, we start that, that tweet and we start that going. And now, um, you know, we're, we're even pivoting because we're looking ahead. Um, in fact, just, just yesterday I was talking to Ram and we said, look, the moment now is to like the next, right? You always want to look at what's next. You want to yeah. be able to keep that going. And so what's next is we're not going to go back to normal. There's a new normal. Yeah. And, you know, and I know you and I have talked, Charlie, and I guess, you know, your wife is lovely enough where she's cooking you a lot of meals. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still risking COVID because I'm like, I'm ordering in. I'll like, I, I just order in a, a ton. And so when we, but we know that when people go to restaurants, they'll expect a different experience. Yeah. We will expect a different experience. For sure. Okay? When you hand your credit card to someone, you're going to think twice about them handing it back to you. Yep. You're, when you're looking at that menu, you're going to think twice about how many people have flipped that menu. Right? Um, all these things. And so with One Dine, we're really focused on, you know, what is this pure order pay solution of the future look like? Where it's the most hygienic experience a restaurant can offer. And I think this is going to be the new normal. So part of that is pivoting and, and figuring out, all right, how do we take our offerings and make sure that we are now creating that next moment and so forth. 
So it really is. I mean, in some ways, it's it's a campaign approach. In other ways, it's very much a process. Like the majority sure. of our clients that we worked with, we worked with for years. You know, because you're constantly once you understand the audience and and you have those media connections and you're kind of this media darling in some ways, you want to keep that going. So let's play a game. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go back and forth to uncover as many different moments to give okay. our listeners an example as um, as we can think of, either company examples or um, whatever. So I'll start. So, so many. I'll, say, okay. I'll say Amazon Prime. Uh, Prime Day, rather. Prime Day. That's a moment, yes. right? Prime Day is a moment. Your turn. Um. I was going to say Harry Potter. Harry, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, mom, mom, mom my, you, 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 still, you, got, you must have your son somewhere near you, right? So, uh, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Home Depot, not to be yeah. confused with Harry Potter. Uh, Home Depot definitely used the moment because they said, we're not going to sell masks to the public. We're only going to be, we're, we're going to donate them. Oh, so that was a huge cool. move. Huge move. I mean, very smart. Who goes to Home Depot to buy that? Like, that's a very small part of their business, right? But it's a very yeah. brilliant strategy to be able to say, "All right, we won't sell these. We'll just donate these." Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good idea. Um, uh, another moment uh, is um, I'll say uh, probably an, a moment that went uh, they could have leveraged it far more than they did. Um, Volvo decided that rather than you having to drive to your uh, to the shop to have your car done, they were going to offer a valet service. You know, so they could have created a moment. So now um, I didn't know about it. So they clearly missed the <laughs> yeah, and that that's the thing. They missed the boat on a moment that they could have taken advantage of. And yeah. what they did is you uh, they pick up your car, they cover it in plastic, totally hygienic. They drop it off all covered in plastic, take it off, scrub everything down with any bacteria. It's a, it's a moment that they could have leveraged. It is. And here's the thing about moment. This is really interesting, Charlie. You said there's two parts to it, right? It's creating that, like, that was a cool, that's a great way to capture a moment. But then you have to amplify it. And they yeah. didn't amplify and that's, it. You're you right. You're yeah. absolutely right. And that's why it fell flat. So they yeah. had a moment, but they didn't amplify it. Right. It was, so you have to have the unique. and the amplification. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, like, oh, go ahead. My turn, right? Your this turn. Is your turn. So many. Okay. So uh, this one's a a client. Go figure. Uh, Forbes. Forbes eight. Uh, yep. So Forbes eight is like the Netflix for entrepreneurs. If you haven't checked it out, it's a really cool app. You get to see a lot of entrepreneurial content. And again, I love the leadership because this is where it makes a difference. I had this idea, yeah. and South by was canceled. And I called uh, Tom, who's the CMO of Forbes 8, and I said, Tom, listen, South by got canceled. Again, you look, you pull different pieces, right? All these speakers that were going to speak, I know many of them, they're friends, they're colleagues. They, they don't get to do their talk. Their audience was very hungry. They wanted to hear it. You guys serve entrepreneurs. This is your chance. Why don't we do a summit for business resiliency? Yeah. Okay. And... And I said, and I said, Tom, like I, I think this would really be solid. I, this is, this is your moment. You serve it's entrepreneurs. Your moment. You, have remote, you know, if you've got again this other piece that we can pull in from, and uh, and Tom and team said, let's do it. We're passionate. We want to help our entrepreneurs. We literally put this together in a week, getting these speakers, getting this whole business resilience e summit. You had one really good speaker there for sure. Yes, I think I think his name was Charlie. Uh, Charlie something. I don't know. I had this multicolored goatee. You know, a lot of white. Yeah, you know, Charlie, your your topic was actually one of the the most uh, the one of the most that we had the highest feedback for, and people were so excited. It was very it was very oh, really? well received. Oh, wow. yeah. Thank you. It was well received, and so you know, it was crazy. We pulled that off in a week. So the, again, it was cool because captive audience speakers yeah. are ready, and you know, these speakers like yourself, Charlie. Usually in a non-pandemic time, not the right moment, you don't they're not available like this to pull something together quickly yeah. and record. Like I couldn't do it. I'd probably be on a flight somewhere. It just takes longer, but in this given atmosphere, it makes perfect sense. And so we're able to pull people like you and pull speakers that were like, this is great content. Um, 
And, you know, over, God, almost 3,000 people attended live. That's and uh, I think we had like over almost 6 million impressions on the campaign. Huge success, Dude. right? Like, and you couldn't even do that on a live event. You just yeah. couldn't. So uh, it was such a great moment. It was taking advantage. But I think these are sort of the key things. The leadership has to understand. They have to be willing. And uh, you, it's a different mentality. I think there's definitely a sense of like, you have to have a little bit of playfulness to say, yeah. let's do it. This is cool. Um, not that they didn't have concerns, but they were definitely, you know, you have that conversation. So yeah. they, the concerns were so wonderful, too, because they said, we want to be sensitive to what's going on. You know, we also don't want it to seem like we're trying to take something from South Island. I said, no, like, it's not not at all, right? People are hungry right now. It makes a lot of sense. You're providing value. Absolutely. That's, you're serving your community. That's all that matters. And so they were, oh, they got that. They were like, oh, okay, I, I get it. So um, so I think all these things make a difference. But I love that. I, that was such a fun example. We pulled this off. Again, all these campaigns we've pulled off in the last, <laughs> these it's, examples I'm giving you are literally in the last couple of weeks. And you're, you're uh, the, you know, you, there's traditional advertising and then there's traditional PR and then there's, uh, I guess, moment advertising, right? Yeah. So traditional advertising, you know, it's, you're not really going to believe what I, what I say about you, but it's still really important because, you know, you're creating that effective frequency and you're sending those impressions and you're still creating some demand. Regular PR, uh, that's great. But regular PR, it's nice to say I have a placement in the New York Times or Fox or whatever. But that doesn't always necessarily create demands. You're kind of like that that bit in the middle where you're getting the media impressions. You're getting the people to talk about you, but you're also creating that demand. Yeah, um, it has to be relevant to your audience, right? Like, yeah. I think this idea would only work for certain brands. Like, you had to serve entrepreneurs for this to work. If I take this to someone else and say, oh, you should do this, if the audience is like, but this is, a, we don't serve entrepreneurs, for example, right? If that's not their audience, it doesn't make sense. It might still go, like, might do really well, but you don't connect that those dots. In this case, those entrepreneurs watching and stuff, not only do they get value, they're now introduced to the Forbes 8 app. They're like, this is cool. It's right. a whole different level. So you've got to pick something that makes sense for your audience. And I think this is very key. Rather than, you know, this is the difference with like kind of the bullseye approach versus yeah. like the let's throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks approach. So I, I give another example of uh, one that you and I spoke about uh, prior to, and it was a just a really phenomenal uh, small company. They uh, it's called Alehorn. Uh, they mm -hmm. sell, you know, really unique uh, drinking mug, uh, a fascinating uh, product. And, you know, when you're when you're apart from your friends and whatnot, how do you, the, the conversation was, well, how do you create a moment right now with a, with a drinking horn? How would you create that moment? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's in a conversation with you, you came up with a hashtag apart, but never alone. Right. And then we built an entire campaign, you know, with the client about apart, but never alone. And it was really just a phenomenal way, again, to get people engaged, um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity. The company is just fantastic as a as a great product, and it gets it makes the product very relevant in today's economic situation. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. it's uh, super. So that that's another example. And I know we're running short of time, so let's rapid fire either examples that fell flat or examples that were awesome. So let's oh, keep going. Yeah. Okay, so another example that did well, right? Uh, I'm such a I'm such an optimist, like positive, <laughs> um, positive person, I guess. But I Carter's Carter's did this great video campaign, um, which I thought was so cool. They, um, of course, because you're not shooting ads, they collectively all the employees shot their their children at home during this time, and yeah. they had this lovely song that all the kids sang separately, and then they put it together. And it's really cute. I mean, it's wonderful. That's and awesome. Carter's the children's brand, right? And so yeah. I'm watching that. Again, I'm their market, right? I have an eight-month-old. Like, I buy Carter's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. So, so it's, it spoke to me as a mom. I'm watching this. I'm going, oh, that's so cute. Like, it's not for everyone. It's not meant to go viral to people who could care less, right? But if you are a parent 
and you see that and you see these cute little kids making chalk drawings on the sidewalk and saying how they get more piggyback rides now, it speaks to you. And I thought that was such a great campaign, like great example of, of leveraging the moment that really speaks to their audience. And of course it's gonna drive business. Like I thought about that and I thought, oh man, like I, you know, my kid's outgrowing his pajamas like crazy. Like I need to, <laughs> I need to buy more. And yeah. so for them, it was like an instant connection. You know, um, another moment, and this is would have been a controversial moment, is when uh, the founder of Dick's Sporting Goods during the massacres that happened, the school shootings, mm. um, he made the decision that we were going to get rid of, he, that he was going to get rid of, um, and, and I may be, some of the stats, you know, I may be a little off on this, but he made the decision that he was going to get rid of guns, not sell guns inside of the Dick's uh, Sporting Goods, but mm. rather than sell it back to the manufacturers, he said, no, we're gonna destroy them instead. So he created that and ended up a controversial, he took a topic that people were talking about school shootings and um, created a moment from that where he um, got rid of the guns and destroyed them instead of selling it back. So he got tons and tons and tons of notoriety and discussions and whatnot related to that. So his target market may yeah. have and this, you know, here's the thing too, it, this is also interesting based on leadership, right? So we have clients who are totally fine pushing the envelope and say, listen, like, this is what we believe in. This is what we stand for. We don't like, this is, we want to take a stance. That looks very different. A moment can be contentious and polarizing, but it doesn't have to be. I'll yeah. give you uh, an example of the flip side of that. We worked with Dippin' Dots, the ice cream brand. And, uh, you know, at that time, Sean Spicer was press secretary and he had, for some reason, been very irate with the ice cream band. And he tweeted all these things. about <laughs> Just I don't know. like. And so the idea was, like, how do we respond to this in a way without polarizing? Because shocker, Democrats and Republicans enjoy ice cream. Who knew? Right? Like, right. Me, maybe of, too much. I might enjoy <laughs> ice cream too much. So, uh, yeah, you you and Patrick both. Oh, my goodness. I cannot <laughs> my house to save her. Like, yeah. I'm glad that that's not, by the way, an emergency supply because we would have none. <laughs> no, it never lasts. I wonder if you're listening to me saying this. Um, so, but it was it was interesting. So, so you know, we can't we can't be dis too divisive here. We don't want to be too divisive. Ice cream brings people together, and so the campaign there was an open letter from the CEO that really spoke to 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 the press secretary at the time. And said, you know, we're we're sorry you've had these experiences. We'd love to do an ice cream social for the press court, like for the press room. You know, well, let's let's be friends, right? It was really like this sweet, um, almost sugary, like that's ice cream, right? It's about ice cream. It's funny. It's a little tongue in cheek about how the company was creating American jobs, and you know, it was it, it got it made it it made the point without being um, in any way contentious. And it was, I mean, that was such a massively successful campaign. I think there were like a billion impressions in the first 20, 48 hours, Ooh. international press. I mean, that, we won two gold Addy uh, awards for that campaign. Um, and it was great. And part of it was also because, you know, when we talked to the CEO, when we talked to the leadership team, they said, let's do it. They had, they trusted, they, you know, yeah. they, they, it was, it could have been like, well, oh, we should probably not say anything, step away. Like, and that would have been, that would have been an option. It was an option, but because they were like, let's do it, right? Like, let's take that risk. Let's let's get it out there. I, I mean, it was amazing. We did that, you know, I Love Dippin' Dots was trending for like six days straight on Twitter. So, um, <laughs> really, and by the way, to get a, a to get a promoted tweet, just so you, because I know you like these numbers, Charlie, it's $200,000 a day to promote a tweet, roughly. So when you see those little promoted tweets, so if you can organically get something like that to trend, I'll let you do the math. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. All right, so uh, let's recap here. So um, in order to create a moment, a moment needs to be unique. It also needs to what? It needs to be uh, a business driver. So a business driver. Or unique, right? Yeah. Something something um, different than, than the norm. It has to be a business driver. So it's got to be meaningful. It's got to be unique. And it's got to be a business driver. And then to create this, it needs to be simple. So simple, so easy to understand. Easy to understand, yes. Relevant to your audience. And, yeah. 
Uh, then, so the SAM method, right? So simple, then the A is amplify. Yes. And that could be amplified through PR uh, in addition to social and so forth. So it's it's telling the story, right? Storify, how do we turn it into a story? Uh, not just for the media, but like the bigger story. How do you amplify? And then how do you measure? Because part of this is also like, what are we seeing? You know, it's funny because it is. it starts with art, but there's a lot of science to this in that we're looking at numbers wow, this is really doing well. This is the message people are resonating with. Mm, this not so much, right? So you're you're in very real time also honing that. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. All right, so any last minute advice for companies that want to go beyond seven figures? Yeah, I'd say, you know, absolutely look for those moments because they're, they exist. I promise you, I've yet to meet a company, Charlie, where I could not find a moment for them, really. You know, whether they were ready to take advantage of that or not is a separate thing, but it's just, in, and the more you do it, the more you develop a lens for it. I mean, there's companies, like you look at Zappos, they were great at finding those moments. There's a lot of companies that excel at customer service, regardless of what the industry would have you believe there are, but they were very good at constantly capturing those moments, those little things, right? And, and building momentum on it. So I would say start, start creating an eye for that. Um, you know, you've got to be able, it does require a little bit of adventure, playfulness to be able to embrace this type of, um, it's again, not, not exactly marketing, not exactly PR. It's a very different way to approach business and getting your message out there. Um, and I would say, you know, don't, uh, don't undersell yourself. I think people just don't realize sometimes, or they'll be like, um, I recently heard the story and I think this is a good, good point for everybody. The CEO of Girl Scouts of America used to be a rocket scientist. Whoa. And I heard that, you know, she said that that she felt like that was too long ago to be relevant. And I thought, wait a second. You know, I'm glad she's talking about it now because of course you want someone who's, you know, you know, um, at the helm of an organization that touches so many girls' lives and teaches them. Yes, you want them to be a rocket scientist. You know? cool brilliant. That? They get STEM, yeah. So, so I think it's it's also this like being able to, and I think you know sometimes this is forest from the trees, right, Charlie? This is why people work with you. This is why people work with me. This is why you know so many times like we work with other people. I work with you <laughs> to be able to get that forest from the trees because right. you can't always see it for yourself. Sometimes it takes someone at a distance going, "Dude, that's cool," or yeah. "Wow," right? And so I think just because. Sometimes when just because you can't see it doesn't mean it, it's not there. And now if people want to follow you or learn more about you and whatnot, where the where's the best place for them to go? Well, definitely check out zenmedia.com. That's where we have all our resources. We've actually put together a uh, crisis success kit right now, which has daily videos of me talking about things like the moment, how to find it, examples of companies doing it right. So if you sort of enjoyed this and are curious about you know, getting your business to the next level, then that's a great place. Of course, connect with me on social media. Pick your poison. I'm quite active on LinkedIn and, and Facebook and Twitter. I guess Instagram as well. Um, not on Snap. so you know. <laughs> Or TikTok. <laughs> or TikTok. All right. <laughs> All right. And that's Shama Hyder, H-Y-D-E-R. And, uh, of course, if you have any questions about growing or scaling your business, even in today's day and age. Especially uh, in today. <laughs> especially in today's day and age. You can check us out over at PredictableProfits.com. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. And we'll see you in another episode of the Beyond Set Figures podcast. Thanks for having me on, Charlie. Thank you very much.